I just watched Iron Man 2. Yes, I own Iron Man 1 and 3 on 4K, and I had to buy this Blu-ray trilogy just to get Iron Man 2. I'm probably just going to sell the codes on eBay and then sell the Blu-ray different separately one day. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It was a bad purchase decision, but I like collecting things and I like the artwork and everything. But uh, I've been having some recording problems, so I need this to be really quick. This is going to be like a Angry Joe rapid fire review. Iron Man 2. Did I like it? Yes. I thought it was great. I think it's not very good as a sequel, but I think it's great as a movie on its own. You know, something like Ant-Man and the Wasp was just a rehash that did the exact same thing. Again, slightly worse in some ways, some slightly better in some ways. But it's just the same thing again. Iron Man 2 is completely different from Iron Man 1. It takes new directions, new ambitions, tons of characters, um, and it's just, you know, more, more content in general. It sets up, sets up, it's more important to the MCU universe and sets up more of the MCU universe as a whole as well. Um, and uh, so the plot, there isn't really a plot, uh, but there's a lot of subplots and a lot of events that happen. Um, so after the events of Iron Man 1, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., is, uh, who's awesome again, uh, who he, uh, so he admitted to everyone he's Iron Man, he's similar to Superman now, uh, where, you know, Metropolis, where uh, Iron Man is a symbol of peace and he's a protector and everyone has faith in him. Um, and some people start to question Iron Man because uh, his character is very, you know, Tony Stark is very self-destructive and is doing childish, um, spontaneous, self-destructive stuff constantly. And the reason for that is uh, he has a uh, arc, what, like arc core thing. Uh, the thing that in his chest that keeps him alive is uh, also also killing him at the same time. And throughout this movie, he is slowly dying. His body is like has veins over it, and he's slowly being you know slowly dying. Um, and that's to explain. You know, you might not like this. I don't care that much because I've seen Endgame and I know how his character. I know I know you know I know how his character evolves. So you, they probably didn't like this back in the day when this released, but I don't mind it now that during. Uh, Endgame, I know how everything ends. Um, so Tony Stark in this, in Iron Man 1, he starts off as this egotistical narcissist uh, who doesn't respect anyone but himself, and he goes through his character arc journey and becomes a better person by the end of it. However, in Iron Man 2, they uh, go back, he goes back to his old ways, and he's even worse now. So he's already, he's already, he's egotistical, narcissistic, self-destructive, doesn't respect others. Um, He's a genius who keeps all of his technology to himself instead of trying to save other people's lives with it, which I don't mind, but you know, they make it up they make it a point in the movie that that's supposed to be a bad thing. The greatest inventors, you know, in history don't necessarily just immediately give away their tech to everyone though. So I don't I don't agree with that, but that's what the movie wants you to think. Um, he's also uh, doesn't treat Pepper and Rody very well. Uh, he's you know, doesn't keep them in the loop, doesn't tell them his plans, he's just kinda of fucking around. And I say fuck because they actually, they make, this movie is more funny than Iron Man 1 and they say fuck twice, it's really funny. Um, <laughs> well they don't actually say it, they bleep it out, but it's, it's super funny. <laughs> I'm just laughing to think about it. This movie's pretty funny, which I like. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's why he's such an asshole in this, kind of. Uh, but you still feel for him, you still want the best for him because it is Robert Downey Jr. And um, yeah, he goes back before Iron Man 1's first scene, basically, like, you know, he's even, he's... He's went backwards. He, take, he took a step back as a character. Um, I also don't like that his relationship with Pepper doesn't advance. Um, I like that Pepper is, is her own character now because, you know, not all female leads need to be the love interest. But so, you know, even though I ship their relationship and I think they're very good supporting characters for each other, I understand uh, why they didn't want to do that. Uh, I like uh, War Machine, Rhodey. So him actually being War Machine, he's got some of the coolest scenes in the movie. Every scene with Don Cheadle, who's now been, re you know, that's a recast. Rhodey has been recast as Don Cheadle uh, from Terrence Howard. So I much prefer Don Cheadle. I think, uh, I think he's just, he provides an offset of chi balance, you know, similar to Pepper. Pepper and Rhodey are very similar, but Rhodey's got, you know, while, while Pepper's a love interest, Rhodey's got that, like, bromance thing where they're like a buddy cop. And uh, he's the responsible one, so basically War Machine's Batman and Iron Man's Robin, uh, even though Tony Stark would himself would admit that. Uh, so I like that War Machine's the responsible one, he's got some great dialogue, especially him. Uh, you got Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, who's obviously awesome, don't have to talk about him, he's just great. 
Um, Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, um, Natasha Romanoff. You know, she, you know, I was a little worried at first that they were going to just put her in there for continuity's sake, but she does. She has possibly the best fight scene of the entire movie. Uh, so she is given, Black Widow is given justice as well. Black Widow is great. Um, what else? You know, I, I have to go through all this uh, because this, my camera's about to turn off any second now. Justin Hammer, I thought he was a pretentious little tool, knob, wannabe. Uh, I didn't like watching him on screen. I loved watching Whiplash on screen, even though Whiplash is incredibly underdeveloped and underexplained. I liked watching him on screen. He's cool. Um, he's got that interesting Russian mute aspect. Uh, and he's tooling with the guy I don't like as well, which is always a good thing. And maybe Justin Hammer was supposed to not be likable, and that's why Ivan is making fun of him so much. But you know, you know, you should have had Justin Hammer have less screen time since you don't like him as much, and Whiplash more screen time because you do like him more. Um, what else? Is this movie so ambitious? It's got so much characters, it sets up so much, the action's all there, uh, there's just so much spectacle, you know, there's so much spectacle to Iron Man 2, and uh, I kind of, I think I've kind of covered it all. I would love to just talk hours and hours about this movie, but I, my camera's going to turn off any second now. So, Iron Man 2, not great as a sequel, the characters don't develop too much, uh, but it's great as a standalone movie, it's great as a Hollywood fun, campy adventure. Uh, it's got better action than the first one. It's got better des like CGI designs. I think the suits look badass. I love the technology. I like that Pepper's their own character now. I love War Machine. Uh, so even though the character relationships didn't develop too much, the characters themselves did develop. Um, and yeah, this is just advancing the MCU universe and I really like Iron Man too. I really, really do. So I adjusted my score because the more I thought about it, the more I had to be more fair to it. So uh, we get I, I lowered it by 0.5. I'm going to give this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars, and I do highly recommend Iron Man 2 because it's just a, such a fun time. I was never bored. It's just there's love the cast, dude. I just the cast is so great. Um, you don't always need an amazing plot to have a fun movie, you know. I, the main purpose of movies is to be entertaining, and this one was very entertaining.